All right, man, peace. So brothers, very recently in the Toxic Femininity series that I have on my channel, I did a video on Miss Clarissa Shields, who was widely considered the most prominent and arguably the best female boxer on the planet Earth. She stated that in her view, unequivocally, she believed that she could run through certain prominent welterweights on the male boxing side. One of the fighters that she named is Mr. Sean Porter, a fighter who is currently a champion in the welterweight division, someone who has been maligned in the past for his quote unquote lack of boxing IQ or lack of boxing skill, at least in comparison to many of the other champions in the welterweight division, i.e. Errol Spence, i.e. Terrence Crawford. A couple of fighters, when I name Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, they're two of the most skillful fighters in all of boxing, not just the welterweight division. So for Sean Porter to fall short when it comes to, you know, certain idiosyncratic aspects or particular boxing skill sets or other intangibles in comparison to Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence, it's not that big a deal. And just the fact that a female like Clarissa Shields thought that she can get into the ring or thinks that she can get into the ring with a fighter as prominent, as dynamic as a Sean Porter shows you that she's out of her fucking mind. But, but that's not that difficult to understand because she is toxically feminine. Sean Porter, and I've mentioned this in other videos, is a fighter that I call a truth machine fighter. And I got that term from Liar Merchant. A truth machine fighter is a fighter like a Joe Frazier, a Marvin Hagler, someone who you get into the ring with them and you might beat them, but they're going to take out their pound of flesh in the process. Nobody's going to get into the ring with Sean Porter and leave that ring unscathed. And I'm talking about men, much less a female. So anyway, Sean Porter is going to respond to some of these inflammatory statements made by Clarissa Shields. They're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Welcome back to TV Sports Avenue with Michael J. Balcott. What's up, what's up? And a very special guest, one of the greatest boxers on the planet, the champ. Sean Porter's here. Sean, how you doing, man? I'm great, my man. How are you guys? I'm doing great. I'm so glad you're here. We have so much to talk about. Not only are you working the Danny Garcia fight this weekend, which we got to talk about. It's a big I'm deal. I'm excited for that fight. Huge fight. All that fight was not a huge fight. <laughs> And I thought that it was rather revelatory how Danny Garcia conducted himself after he stopped Adrian Granados, I think in three rounds or four rounds. I'm like, oh no, my bad. I believe he stopped him in six rounds. Let me give Granados his credit for taking his ass whooping for six rounds. It's just that the fight should have been stopped after two or three rounds because it was very clear that Adrian Granados did not have the power or the skills to hurt Danny Garcia. It was also very obvious that Danny Garcia was laser focused. His power was on point. And his sharpness was on point. And Danny Garcia is that type of fighter that unless you're the creme de la creme in the weight division, you're not going to beat him. You're not going to beat him. He's also a fighter who, if he catches you early in the fight, those first two or three rounds, when his power, which is studying, is at its pinnacle or its apex, you certainly have a very good chance of getting knocked out. I thought that Danny Garcia hurt Sean Porter a couple of times very early in their fight. His power is very underrated, Danny Garcia's power. But once again, just to get back to the point, after the fight, he was going on and on about how he's back now and he's this and he's that. One of the things that Al Heyman does so well is he matchmakes so damn well. He allows B-class fighters, C-class fighters to make a living in boxing because he does not match them against A-class fighters. Every once in a while, he'll give a C-class fighter a fight against an A-class fighter so that he can make even more money than he normally makes. But Al Heyman knows that it hurts the bottom line for everyone when you're always matching C-class fighters against A-class fighters. It hurts your A-class fighters bottom line because people start to look at him as a cherry picker. It hurts your C-class fighters bottom line because now he's constantly getting his ass whooped and therefore his purses start to go down. The revenue from the fights start to go down and it hurts your own bottom line as a matchmaker and as a manager because people are losing interest in your product. So that's why Al Heyman's business model is so good. He would never have allowed Terrence Crawford to fight Amir Khan. Amir Khan at this point in his career is a C-class fighter. Amir Khan should be fighting guys like Adrian Granados. And then if he's able to win five, six fights in a row, then you put him in the ring with a Terrence Crawford. But that's how his career is supposed to go. Then Amir gets his ass whooped by Terrence Crawford after he has six victories in a row. And then, of course, he goes right back to his C-class level. That's how you keep everybody eating. But Bob Arum does not care about that. But also, Good. you're being called out by, well, in my opinion, one of the greatest boxers alive right now. Somebody who I don't think... Yeah, she's one of the greatest boxers alive right now if you're a simp like yourself. <laughs> Look at Sean Porter's face. 
I don't think most people would expect to call you out. Clarissa Shields is calling you out. Nah. Look at this broad. <laughs> on, on the waistband of her trunks, it says T Rex. This chick wants to be a man so bad. No, not me. Oh, yeah, man. She said her name? She said your name, but uh, for those of you unfamiliar with. And Sean Porter's trying to act like he did not hear what Clarissa Shields said about him. He heard about it. He knows what she said about him. With Clarissa Shields, in my opinion, the greatest female boxer alive right now. Well, you'd have to call her the best female boxer alive right now. To call someone the greatest, once again, and I stated this in a previous video, would mean that she's pretty much near the end of her career and she has accomplished more than anyone else. That's what the term great normally means or entails in the sports world. Two gold medals in her back pocket, she's amazing. So I asked her, I asked her yesterday, I go, look, you know, the problem you're going to have is you're so dominant that you got to figure out who your next opponent's going to be. And Sean, that's when she started talking about fighting men and she mentioned your name. Take a look. I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist, uh... <laughs> this bro sounds like Martin Lawrence in the episode where he got his ass whooped by Tommy Hearns. I am the CBC champion. <laughs> Remember when Martin he fought that uh that charity match and he did waving around his, his fake ass belt and then try to challenge Tommy Hearns. That's this broad. Uh, undisputed champion. I think people get it kind of. They always say they get it crooked like your damn teeth. They say, oh, you know, women can't be the man. I, I, I spar with men. And, I mean, I drop men. I, I bust men in the hole. I beat men up all the time. I'm all in favor of you getting into the ring with Sean Porter. I would love to see that. I really would. If they could make that fight tomorrow, I would do a preview of it and I would do an aftermath of that fight. And with all the glee and enjoyment of a five-year-old on Christmas morning, watch that man up your ass. I would love to see that shit. And then see you after the fight with two big old eye jammies looking like Jackie Chan because you won't even be able to see out of your damn eyes in the post-fight press conference or the post-fight interview in the middle of the ring talking about, I just want to say that I respect Sean Porter and this it's no hard feelings. I was just trying to, you know, I wanted to challenge myself and I got to get to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that fight, but we know it's not going to happen. But what I would really love is if Sean Porter got in contact with her people and let them know, I'm not going to fight you for real because I have nothing to gain from that. It's only going to make me look bad, especially in this Me Too Time's Up movement era. But what we can do, I can fly your ass out here to Ohio. You come to my gym and we spar for five rounds and then you can find out what it's really like. We could do that with no problem. But what you're not going to do, you're not going to get on TV and try to blow your own raggedy name up by emasculating me. That's what you're not going to do. Uh, it's weird, like, if I was to say, like, which is the guy I think I could beat him. I think I could beat Keith Thurman. You know, he beat Sean Porter. I think I could beat Sean Porter, too. You know, skill-wise and just uh, strength-wise. I think that, they're may, that they may be stronger than me, but, they're, but their boxing ability isn't, isn't like mine. Um, this bro really thinks that she's Floyd Mayweather or some shit. <laughs> Um, Triple G, he's older now, but I, I can give Triple G a run for his money. <laughs> I give him a run for his money. All right, so Sean, I asked her after this, I go, are you dead serious about this? And she said, I am 100% serious. She, you, the last, last fight, I believe, was 165 pounds. She's dominant. You, you are the reigning WBC welterweight champ, though. What do you think? What's your reaction? Yeah. Sean Porter, like, you know, what she's saying right now is real funny. I would love to just spark her right quick and then... Me and her can go to the bedroom and make a few crooked teeth babies. You know, it's cute that, you know, she, um, she's made it to the point that she's made it to. Um, that is remarkable. That is, um, very, very, um, respectful. I think every fighter in the world, whether you're a man, woman, whatever, you should respect the things that she's done. Right. Once you talk, especially when you talk about fighting Keith Thurman or, or Showtime Sean Porter. Right. There's a lot that goes into it. And it's one of those things that, you know, it's, 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 it's things are easier said than done. So um, you to my next Once again, Clarissa Shields got knocked down by a woman. Sean Porter might kill her. Next question, because I asked her, I was like, look, I go, we, we, there's an obvious power and strength differential. Like, Sean, she, she is dominant. Styles make fights. That's a common saying in boxing, and it's 100% true. Um, but along with that... Uh, Sean Porter has more than enough amateur pedigree as well as professional experience to, to be able to foresee every trap 
that Clarissa Shields thinks that she's going to set for him and to set some traps of his own. She has the thing that she, I don't think, realizes this. She does not realize a lot of shit, Sean Porter. Let's be for real. You have to be politically correct because of the climate that you're in. You're in the entertainment industry because that's what professional sports is. So therefore, you have to tread lightly. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know that it's a fucking joke that women are boxing, period. Much less that a woman is trying to challenge a man to a boxing match. Especially under the, the, the false understanding of what her chances would be. Knowing damn well that once the first round starts, if she feels those punches from a real grown man who's accustomed to training five, six hours a day, she's not even going to want to finish the first round. Is that, you know, whatever top boxer she's been in the ring with, I'm sure that that top boxer was, you know, took his foot off the gas pedal. And any fighter that isn't at that level uh, is, is, is really defending himself against her because he's not on her level. Right. And so, you know, you know, here's the thing. You put Clarissa Shields in the ring with a fighter at her weight class at her same level, and she's going to be outmatched um, from, the, from the physical standpoint, from um, possibly the mental standpoint. Um, no, not possibly. You already know that she's going to get outmatched from the mental standpoint because no matter how high of a boxing IQ that you have, when you get into the ring with another fighter who you quickly are able to deduce has a boxing IQ that is as high or higher than yours, suddenly there's going to be another amount of pressure that you put on yourself because you're going to say that my normal tricks don't work. What do I do now? And what he's basically saying in a roundabout way is that women are going to panic <laughs> in the physical confrontation with a man once they see that they don't have the mental edge. That's what he's saying in a roundabout way. Um, you know, just all the way around, I think that that is an animal that she's not really prepared for. Gotta ask. In other words, you're saying that you're an animal. You're a beast in that ring. And I agree. W would you ever consider doing like a three-round exhibition with the Clarissa Shields, or is that something you would never even consider? Great idea. Consider. I wouldn't even, I honestly, I wouldn't consider that. Of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. That's why I said what you should do, if you don't like her yapping, is get in contact with a team and you guys can have a nice friendly sparring match. But you're probably not going to do that anyway. And that's part of the problem. This is one of the reasons why toxic femininity is growing exponentially. Because men just tolerate things and tolerate things and tolerate things and tolerate things. And at the end of the day, it's only going to get worse. It's like trying to ignore cancer. It does not mean that he has to physically disrespect her or anything of that nature. But sometimes when your dog is acting up, you have to roll up that newspaper and bop it on top of the head to let it know. I'm not going to tolerate that. That I don't think that there's, I don't have anything to prove. Um, I think if she's got something to prove, she's she's got something else to prove against someone else. Uh, and, and, and let me reel it all the way back in um, again and say it again. I have tons of respect for her and the things yeah. that she's done. But... That's obvious, bro, but what's also very obvious is that she has very little respect for you, which is very common these days in interactions between angry, toxically feminine females and men who are just minding their own damn business. Hey, speaking for myself, I know that when you get in the ring with me, there's a lot more that, that you have to prepare for than what your eyes see and what, in, in a lot of ways what, you, what your mind could imagine. Um, I.E., it looks different from the outside than it's going to feel when you get on the inside. And, you know, that's just one of those things that, you know, it's, you know, you have to be there to, you have to actually live it out in order to really uh, understand that. And that's not something that I, I intend to live out with her. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about another. <laughs> very good, shrewd answer, Sean Porter. Very respectable. Very respectful. Good for you. You handled yourself with appropriate decorum good job unfortunately her delusion will continue but anyway peace <laughs>